Hi, this is Kim from Studies Weekly. Um, I know that there have been some educators who have an hour every single day to teach social studies. So if you're one of those educators, let me model for you how you can use our four-page magazine format to meet the needs of your students for up to five hours or more every single week. What I'd like you to do is go to studiesweekly.com forward slash online, and we're going to log in. We're going to use TX Teacher. TX is capitalized, teacher is lowercase. The password is demo, D-E-M-O. Click login. Go ahead and click the reading. And let's go down to fourth grade. Texas Studies Weekly. And you can see all of the weekly um, units here, but let's go ahead and click on week four, the first people in Texas. Now you have your articles right here. We have the first people in Texas. Um, I'm sure that you realize that we have the read aloud feature here. You also have the primary sources and related media, and this is at the article level. So you definitely have a mini lesson right here analyzing and then answering the questions. You can do this as a whole group on the teacher account. Of course, you can give your kids a post-it or something like that for a mini pop quiz or review. We're going to go back to the article. I'm going to go back to week four. And I want you to see the icon right up here. It's a white mortarboard in a red box. You click it and it will open up different types of content. Let's take a look at the lesson plan for week number four. Now we're just focusing in on the first lesson, some of the read aloud books, and the writing prompt for the week. A lot of times the writing can be covered using the social studies content, and it takes more than just one class period for kids to fully develop an essay. So you definitely want to have them uh, to have some time to map out their idea, to brainstorm, and to start writing the first draft. So notice that we have our theme words, our building academic vocabulary. That should be a mini lesson on Monday. And we have two videos called Using Words to Know. You should definitely check those out. On the first three weeks of every grade level, we have our building academic vocabulary explanation along with those videos. Here's our suggested literature. If you need these books and you don't have them in either your classroom library or your media center, may I suggest that you use um, worldcat.org. This is a great way to find books. You sign up for a free account, and if you type in something like Paleo um, Americans, within a 25 mile radius of where your zip code is when you registered for this, it will show you all of the books in that 25 mile radius that are in public libraries, within your school district library, college, or university libraries. And even in fourth and fifth grade, kids still enjoy read alouds. So you can use the filters to go to the audience, juvenile, because it's kids. And perhaps we want um, something that's a little bit more recent or you have an author in mind, you can also click on this and it will give you a little bit more information about what's inside this book. Then it shows you all the places where it's available. So that's just one more way to get more information into your classroom. So you can always add suggested literature. So our first page article is called The First People in Texas, and you see we have our Teaks and our Elps. We have our lesson plan suggestion. This is a shared reading using the Fab Four, the reciprocal teaching method, and a mini lesson in vocabulary, building academic vocabulary, and the word here is friction. There's a bunch of templates available that will show you where you can find additional materials to do building academic vocabulary. Please check on your first three weeks lesson plan, the same area. Then we have our teacher questions and differentiated instruction. I'm going to scroll down to the writing prompt. Here's our let's write writing prompt and we give you it's literary and the, the students have a choice of either writing about an imagined experience as an archaeologist or as the oldest child in a Paleo-American family. That's the one that I would go with especially if I was doing a shared and modeled writing. 
Here are some other suggestions. You certainly can explore these with your students. And I would recommend checking out our digital developments and selecting one from the list to publish. So this week they're suggesting Animoto to do this, but I actually have another one that I'd like to show you. This is where I found the information. I'm going to go to the Resource tab. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. I'm going to go to General Resources and click on Digital Developments. These are all free 2.0 technologies. So I'm just going to click through the pages and notice how it's set up. The first column is going to have your website. The second column kind of explains what this resource is. And then in the third column right here, it's going to show what you can do with this, our recommendation. So um, I'm going to go with Storybird, and I can either do this collaboratively with my students or I can do it independently, but I just pulled up Storyboard right away. So I think I want to go ahead and find an artwork that would match. So I'm going to go with Native Americans. And I'm going to turn, take the S off. Artwork. I'm going to go with this photo. I'm going to use this art. I'm going to go with a picture book. And then I can type the story that I've already um, done a draft and it's been edited so I'm ready to do my final copy here. So I can start off with one day. My family and I were searching for food. So I can go in and I can add, write my entire story here. I can save it. I can add another page if I want. I can drag in another um, picture, find one that looks very interesting. Maybe this one. Maybe I can add my own. I can save this. I can also print it out. Back here. I'm going to go back up to the top. Oop, I want to show you one more thing. We also have that primary source analysis tool. Remember that at Laddle that I showed you on the, the primary source, the related media tab? You can analyze it. You take it another step further. So this is something that you can do every single week because the kids need to have lots of practice. And when they finally get this whole group, you can then put them in cooperative groups. You can remove more scaffolding and have them work with a partner and then finally do it on their own. So step one, two, and three are rather easy, but step four requires a lot more work and they need to be taught how to do online research. So in addition to the primary source analysis tool, I recommend that you download our productive Google search quick tips for kids and start teaching them how to use nifty modifiers and reverse image search. So this in itself is another way to extend the lesson. We also have our wraps, our recommended iPad and Android apps. All of these are free as well. It's set up similar to the digital developments. We have the name, the resource description, and then a classroom application. So if you want to increase the rigor and relevance of your class, please check out our recommended iPad apps. We also have um, some wonderful ways that you can increase the rigor. And I think this would be perfect for students who are in third, fourth, and fifth grade. Penny for your thoughts, have them start working on a debate carousel. Or if you wanted, you could have them do the Cornell note-taking method. So this is another strategy that you can incorporate. So if you don't like the reciprocal teaching method, why not have them do the Cornell notes? And if you're not sure how that looks like in a, a elementary classroom, check out our professional development on demand. So here's where you're going to find our reciprocal teaching Fab Four video. You'll see our Cornell note taking method. Remember the building academic vocabulary. Here's part one and part two. And don't forget we have some great virtual field trips. Here's a wonderful way to find additional materials that are online. Go ahead and click on media search. And let's say I wanted to find some information about um, paleo Americans or something. Just click, ah, what do you know? We've got more. Here's that at Laddell that we were talking about that you could use the primary source analysis tool with. Or if I wanted to talk about archaeologists, I could click there and find more evidence. We also have a wonderful Blackline Master 
that um, your kids could do. So I'm going to go back to the fourth grade publication, click on week four. Oops, I went to the Spanish version. And let's take a look at the Black Line Masters. Here's a cookie excavation, and this is how archaeologists work. Plus, you can get a little bit of math work in there as well. So please be sure to check out all of our offerings, and it's really easy to get overwhelmed by a new program, but we really do have a full, well-rounded curriculum for you. We also included our professional development videos for you right here at Point of Use, and I hope that gives you some ideas and gets those creative juices flowing. Thanks so much.